The Lotus Sutra Sanskrit, Sadharma Pundarika Sutra Sadharma Pundarika Sutra, literally, Sutra on the White Lotus of the Sublime Dharma, is one of the most popular and influential Mahayana sutras, and the basis on which the Tiantai, Tendai, Chiante, and Nichiren schools of Buddhism were established. According to Paul Williams, for many East Asian Buddhists since early times the Lotus Sutra contains the final teaching of the Buddha, complete and sufficient for salvation. Topic. Title The earliest known Sanskrit title for the sutra is the Sadharma Pundarika Sutra, which translates to scripture of the lotus blossom of the fine dharma. In English, the shortened form Lotus Sutra is common. The Lotus Sutra has also been highly regarded in a number of Asian countries where Mahayana Buddhism has been traditionally practiced. Translations of this title into the languages of some of these countries include Sanskrit, Sadharma Pundarika Sutra, Sadharma Pundarika Sutra, Chinese, Miao Fa Lian Hua Jing Pinyin, Miao Fa Lian Hua Jing, shortened to Fa Hua Jing, Fa Hua Jing, Japanese, Miao Fa Lian Hua Jing, Miao Ho Renge Kyo, Ha Kyo, Ho Kyo, Fa Hua Jing Korean, Hangul, Miao Bio Bianwe Jong RR, Miao Bio Bianwe Jong, shortened to Bio Fu Jong, Tibetan, Wiley, Dam Cho's Padma Dkar Poe Mdo, Thl, Dam Cho Pema Karpoe Du Vietnamese, Du Phap Lin Hoa Kin, shortened to Phap Hoa Kin Topic. Textual history Topic. Formation In 1934, based on his text critical analysis of Chinese and Sanskrit versions, Kogaku Fuse concluded that the Lotus Sutra was composed in four main stages. According to Fuse, the verse sections of chapters 1–9 and 17 were probably created in the 1st century BCE, with the prose sections of these chapters added in the 1st century CE. He estimates the date of the third stage, chapters 10, 11, 13 to 16, 18 to 20, and 27, around 100 CE. Chapters 21 to 26 belong to the last stage, around 150 CE. According to Stephen F. Tyser and Jacqueline Stone, there is consensus about the stages of composition, but not about the dating of these strata. Tamura argues that the first stage of composition, chapters 2 to 9, was completed around 50 CE and expanded by chapters 10 to 21 around 100 CE. He dates the third stage, chapters 22 to 27, around 150 CE. Karashima proposes another modified version of Fuse's hypothesis with the following sequence of composition: Chapters 2 to 9 form the earliest stratum. The first layer of this stratum includes the tristab verses of these chapters, which may have been transmitted orally in a Prakrit dialect. The second layer consists of the sloka verses and the prose of chapters 2 to 9. Chapters 1, 10-20, 27, and a part of Chapter 5 that is missing in Kumarahiva's translation. Chapters 21-26 and the section on Devadatta in Chapter 11 of the Sanskrit version. Topic. Translations into Chinese Three translations of the Lotus Sutra into Chinese are extant. The Lotus Sutra of the Correct Dharma in 10 volumes and 27 chapters, translated by Dharmaraksa in 286 CE. The Lotus Sutra of the Wonderful Dharma in 8 volumes and 28 chapters, translated by Kumarajiva in 406 CE. The supplemented Lotus Sutra of the Wonderful Dharma in seven volumes and twenty-seven chapters, a revised version of Kumarahiva's text, translated by Nyanagupta and Dharmagupta in 601 CE. The Lotus Sutra was originally translated from Sanskrit into Chinese by Dharmaraksa in 286 CE in Chang'an during the Western Jin period 265-317 CE. However, the view that there is a high degree of probability that the base text for that translation was actually written in a Prakrit language has gained widespread acceptance. It may have originally been composed in a Prakrit dialect and then later translated into Sanskrit to lend it greater respectability. This early translation by Dharmaraksa was superseded by a translation in seven fascicles by Kumarahiva's team in 406 CE. According to Jean Noel Robert, Kumarajiva relied heavily on the earlier version. 
The Sanskrit editions are not widely used outside of academia. In some Chinese and Japanese sources the Lotus Sutra has been compiled together with two other sutras which serve as a prologue and epilogue, respectively the Innumerable Meanings Sutra Chinese, Wu Liang Yi Jing Pinyin, Wu Liang Yi Jing Muryogi Kyo and the Samantabhadra Meditation Sutra Chinese, Pu Xian Jing Pinyin, Pu Xian Jing, Fugan Kyo. This composite sutra is often called the Threefold Lotus Sutra or Three-Part Dharma Flower Sutra Chinese, Fa Wa San Bu Jing Pinyin, Fa Wa San Bu Jing, Hak San Bu Kyo. Translations into Western languages The first French translation of the Lotus Sutra, based on a Nepalese Sanskrit manuscript, was published by Eugène Bernouf in 1852. Hendrik Kern completed his English translation of an ancient Nepalese Sanskrit manuscript in 1884. Later translations into English, French, Spanish and German are based on Kumarahiva's Chinese text. Each of these translations incorporate different approaches and styles that range from complex to simplified. Outline Ch. 1. Introduction. During a gathering at Vulture Peak, Shakyamuni Buddha goes into a state of deep meditative absorption, the earth shakes in six ways, and he brings forth a ray of light which illuminates thousands of Buddha fields in the east. Bodhisattva Manjusri then states that the Buddha is about to expound his ultimate teaching. Ch. 2. Ways and Means. Shakyamuni explains his use of skillful means to adapt his teachings according to the capacities of his audience. He reveals that the ultimate purpose of the Buddhas is to cause sentient beings to obtain the insight of the Buddha and to enter the way into the insight of the Buddha. Ch. 3. A parable. The Buddha teaches a parable in which a father uses the promise of various toy carts to get his children out of a burning house. Once they are outside, he gives them all one large cart to travel in instead. This symbolizes how the Buddha uses the three vehicles, arhatship, pratyekabuddhahood and samyaksambuddhahood, as skillful means to liberate all beings, even though there is only one vehicle. The Buddha also promises Sariputra that he will attain Buddhahood. Ch. 4. Faith and understanding. Four senior disciples address the Buddha. They tell the parable of the poor son and his rich father, who guides him with pedagogically skillful devices to regain self-confidence and recognize his own Buddha wisdom. Ch. 5. Parable of the Plants. This parable says that the Dharma is like a great monsoon rain that nourishes many different kinds of plants who represent sravakas, pratyekabuddhas, and bodhisattvas, and all beings receiving the teachings according to their respective capacities. Ch. 6. Assurances of becoming a Buddha. The Buddha prophecies the enlightenment of Mahakasyapa, Subhuti, Mahakatyayana and Mahamadgalyayana. Ch. 7. The Magic City. The Buddha teaches a parable about a group of people seeking a great treasure who are tired of their journey and wish to quit. Their guide creates a magical phantom city for them to rest in and then makes it disappear. The Buddha explains that the Magic City represents the Hinayana Nirvana and the treasure is Buddhahood. Ch. 8. Assurances for 500 Arhats. 500 Arhats are assured of their future Buddhahood. They tell the parable of a man who has fallen asleep after drinking and whose friend sews a jewel into his garment. When he wakes up he continues a life of poverty without realizing he is really rich, he only discovers the jewel after meeting his old friend again. The hidden jewel has been interpreted as a symbol of Buddha nature. Zimmerman noted the similarity with the nine parables in the Tathagatagarbha Sutra that illustrate how the indwelling Buddha in sentient beings is hidden by negative mental states. Ch. 9. Assurances for the trainees and adepts, Ananda, Rahula and 2000 Sravakas are assured of their future Buddhahood. Ch. 10. Teacher of the Dharma, presents the practices of teaching the sutra which includes accepting, embracing, reading, reciting, copying, explaining, propagating it, and living in accordance with its teachings. The teacher of the Dharma is praised as the messenger of the Buddha. The theme of propagating the Lotus Sutra which starts here, continues in the remaining chapters. Ch. 11. The treasure stupa, a great jeweled stupa rises from the earth and floats in the air, a voice is heard from within praising the Lotus Sutra. Another Buddha resides in the tower, the Buddha Prabhudaratna who is said to have made a vow to make an appearance to verify the truth of the Lotus Sutra whenever it is preached. 
Countless manifestations of Shakyamuni Buddha in the ten directions are now summoned by the Buddha. Thereafter Prabhudaratna invites Shakyamuni to sit beside him in the jeweled stupa. This chapter reveals the existence of multiple Buddhas at the same time and the doctrine of the eternal nature of Buddhahood. Ch. 12, Devadatta, through the stories of the Dragon King's daughter and Devadatta, the Buddha teaches that everyone can become enlightened, women, animals, and even the most sinful murderers. Ch. 13, Encouragement to uphold the Sutra, the Buddha encourages all beings to embrace the teachings of the Sutra in all times, even in the most difficult ages to come. The Buddha prophecies that 6,000 nuns who are also present will become Buddhas. Ch. 14, Peace and Contentment, Manjusri asks how a bodhisattva should spread the teaching. In his reply Shakyamuni Buddha describes the proper conduct and the appropriate sphere of relations of a bodhisattva. A bodhisattva should not talk about the faults of other preachers or their teachings. He is encouraged to explain the Mahayana teachings when he answers questions. Virtues such as patience, gentleness, a calm mind, wisdom and compassion are to be cultivated. Ch. 15, Springing up from the earth, in this chapter countless bodhisattvas spring up from the earth, ready to teach, and the Buddha declares that he has trained these bodhisattvas in the remote past. This confuses some disciples including Maitreya, but the Buddha affirms that he has taught all of these bodhisattvas himself. Ch. 16, The Eternal Lifespan of the Tathagata, the Buddha explains that he is truly eternal and omniscient. He then teaches the parable of the excellent physician who entices his sons into taking his medicine by feigning his death. Ch. 17, Merits and Virtues of Enlightenment, the Buddha explains that since he has been teaching as many beings as the sands of the Ganges have been saved. Ch. 18, Merits and Virtues of Joyful Acceptance, Faith in the Teachings of the Sutra brings much merit and lead to good rebirths. Ch. 19, Merits and Virtues obtained by a teacher of the Dharma, the relative importance of the merits of the six senses are explained by the Buddha. Ch. 20, The Bodhisattva Siddhaparabuddha, the Buddha tells a story about a previous life when he was a Bodhisattva called Siddhaparabuddha never disparaging and how he treated every person he met, good or bad, with respect, always remembering that they will too become Buddhas. Ch. 21, The spiritual power of the Tathagata, reveals that the Sutra contains all of the eternal Buddha's secret spiritual powers. The bodhisattvas who have sprung from the earth ch. 15, are entrusted with the task of propagating it. Ch. 22, the passing of the commission, the Buddha transmits the Lotus Sutra to all bodhisattvas in his congregation and entrusts them with its safekeeping. The Buddha Prabhudaratna in his jeweled stupa and the countless manifestations of Shakyamuni Buddha return to their respective Buddha fields. Ch. 23, the Bodhisattva Bhaisajiraha, the Buddha tells the story of the Medicine King Bodhisattva, who, in a previous life, burnt his body as a supreme offering to a Buddha. The hearing and chanting of the Lotus Sutra is also said to cure diseases. The Buddha uses nine similes to declare that the Lotus Sutra is the king of all sutras. Ch. 24, the Bodhisattva Gadgadasvara, wonderful voice. Gadgadasvara, a bodhisattva from a distant world, visits Vulture Peak to worship the Buddha. Bodhisattva, wonderful voice, once made offerings of various kinds of music to the Buddha. Cloud Thunder King. His accumulated merits enable him to take 34 different forms to propagate the Lotus Sutra. Ch. 25, the Bodhisattva Avalokiteshvara, this chapter is devoted to Avalokiteshvara, describing him as a compassionate Bodhisattva who hears the cries of sentient beings, and rescues those who call upon his name. Ch. 26, Dharani Hariti and several Bodhisattvas offer sacred formulae in order to protect those who keep and recite the Lotus Sutra. Ch. 27, King Wonderfully Adorned, a chapter on the conversion of King Wonderful Adornment by his two sons. Ch. 28, Encouragement of the Bodhisattva Samantabhadra, a Bodhisattva called Universal Virtue, asks the Buddha how to preserve the Sutra in the future. Samantabhadra promises to protect and guard all those who keep this Sutra in the future age of Dharma decline. Teachings One vehicle, many skillful means This Lotus Sutra is known for its extensive instruction on the concept and usage of skillful means Sanskrit, Upaya, Japanese, Haban, the seventh paramita or perfection of a bodhisattva, mostly in the form of parables. 
The many skillful or expedient means in the three vehicles are revealed to all be part of the one vehicle ekayana, which is also the bodhisattva path. This is also one of the first sutras to use the term Mahayana, or great vehicle. In the Lotus Sutra, the one vehicle encompasses so many different teachings because the Buddha's compassion and wish to save all beings led him to adapt the teaching to suit many different kinds of people. As Paul Williams explains, Although the corpus of teachings attributed to the Buddha, if taken as a whole, embodies many contradictions, these contradictions are only apparent. Teachings are appropriate to the context in which they are given and thus their contradictions evaporate. The Buddha's teachings are to be used like ladders, or, to apply an age-old Buddhist image, like a raft employed to cross a river. There is no point in carrying the raft once the journey has been completed and its function fulfilled. When used, such a teaching transcends itself. The sutra emphasizes that all these seemingly different teachings are actually just skillful applications of the one dharma and thus all constitute the one Buddha vehicle and knowledge of all modes. The Lotus Sutra sees all other teachings are subservient to, propagated by and in the service of the ultimate truth of the one vehicle leading to Buddhahood. The Lotus Sutra also claims to be superior to other sutras and states that full Buddhahood is only arrived at by exposure to its teachings and skillful means. All beings have the potential to become Buddhas. The Lotus Sutra is also significant because it reveals that women, evil people and even animals have the potential to become Buddhas. It in fact teaches that beings have the potential to become Buddhas in their present form, and provides instructions including, having faith in, following and practicing, not slandering, and truly refuting any slander of it and its teachings. That is, with the Lotus Sutra, people need neither practice austerities for countless kalpas nor wait for rebirth in a different physical form to become a Buddha. Previous teachings held that women must be reborn as men and then practice for innumerable kalpas in order to become Buddhas. Thus through its many similes and parables, the Lotus Sutra affirms the potential for all beings to become Buddhas, and furthermore provides instructions for all beings to becoming a Buddha in the present life. The Lotus Sutra also teaches that the Buddha has many embodiments or emanations and these are the countless bodhisattva disciples. These bodhisattvas choose to remain in the world to save all beings and to keep the teaching alive. According to Jean Reeves, "...because the Buddha and his Dharma are alive in such bodhisattvas, he himself continues to be alive. The fantastically long life of the Buddha, in other words, is at least partly a function of and dependent on his being embodied in others." The Lotus Sutra also teaches various dharanis or the prayers of different celestial bodhisattvas who out of compassion protect and teach all beings. The lotus flower imagery points to this quality of the bodhisattvas. The lotus symbolizes the bodhisattva who is rooted in the earthly mud and yet flowers above the water in the open air of enlightenment. The universe outlined by the Lotus Sutra encompasses realms of gods, devas, dragons and other mythological beings, requiring numerous dimensions to contain them. Buddhas are described as the patient teachers, who constantly guide all beings to enlightenment. The radical message of the Lotus Sutra therefore includes the fact that all beings have the potential to become Buddhas and teach the Dharma here and now. The nature of the Buddhas Another concept introduced by the Lotus Sutra is the idea that the Buddha is an eternal entity, who achieved nirvana eons ago, but remains in the world to help teach beings the Dharma time and again. He reveals himself as the father of all beings and evinces the loving care of just such a father. Moreover, the Sutra indicates that even after the parinirvana apparent physical death of a Buddha, that Buddha continues to be real and to be capable of communicating with the world. The idea that the physical death of a Buddha is the termination of that Buddha is graphically refuted by the appearance of another Buddha, who passed long before. In the vision of the Lotus Sutra, Buddhas are ultimately immortal. Crucially, not only are there multiple Buddhas in this view, but an infinite stream of Buddhas extending infinitely in space in the ten directions and through unquantifiable eons of time. The Lotus Sutra illustrates a sense of timelessness and the inconceivable, often using large numbers and measurements of time and space. The Buddha of the Lotus Sutra states, In this way, since my attainment of Buddhahood it has been a very great interval of time. My life span is incalculable asatkyayakalpas rather a lot of eons, ever enduring, never perishing. O oh good men! 
The lifespan I achieved in my former treading of the Bodhisattva path even now is not exhausted, for it is twice the above number. Yet even now, though in reality I am not to pass into extinction enter final nirvana, yet I proclaim that I am about to accept extinction. By resort to these expedient devices this skill in means the thus come one the Tathagata teaches and converts the beings. Impact According to Donald Lopez, the Lotus Sutra is "...arguably the most famous of all Buddhist texts," presenting "...a radical revision of both the Buddhist path and of the person of the Buddha." The Lotus Sutra was frequently cited in Indian works by Nagarjuna, Vasubandhu, Khandrakirti, Shantideva and several authors of the Madhyamaka and the Yogacara school. The only extant Indian commentary on the Lotus Sutra is attributed to Vasubandhu. According to Jonathan Silk, the influence of the Lotus Sutra in India may have been limited, but it is a prominent scripture in East Asian Buddhism. The sutra has most prominence in Tiantai, sometimes called the Lotus School, and Nichiren Buddhism. It is also influential in Zen Buddhism. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Buddhism in China. Dao Sheng, a 5th-century Chinese Buddhist monk wrote the earliest extant commentary on the Lotus Sutra. Dao Sheng was known for promoting the concept of Buddha nature and the idea that even deluded people will attain enlightenment. Dao Shen of the Tang dynasty wrote that the Lotus Sutra was the most important sutra in China. Zhi Yi, the generally credited founder of the Tiantai school of Buddhism, was the student of Nanyue Hu Si who was the leading authority of his time on the Lotus Sutra. Zhi Yi's philosophical synthesis saw the Lotus Sutra as the final teaching of the Buddha and the highest teaching of Buddhism. He wrote two commentaries on the Sutra, Profound Meanings of the Lotus Sutra and Words and Phrases of the Lotus Sutra. Zhi Yi also linked the teachings of the Lotus Sutra with the Buddha nature teachings of the Mahayana Mahapurnirvana Sutra and made a distinction between the eternal Buddha, Vairokana, and the manifestations. In Tiantai, Vairokana the primeval Buddha is seen as the bliss body Sambhogakaya, of the historical Gautama Buddha. <laughs> Buddhism in Japan The Lotus Sutra is a very important sutra in Tiantai and correspondingly, in Japanese Tendai founded by Seicho, 767-822. Tendai Buddhism was the dominant form of mainstream Buddhism in Japan for many years and the influential founders of popular Japanese Buddhist sects including Nichiren, Honen, Shinran and Dogen were trained as Tendai monks. Nichiren, a 13th-century Japanese Buddhist monk, founded an entire school of Buddhism based on his belief that the Lotus Sutra is the Buddha's ultimate teaching, and that the title is the essence of the sutra, the seed of Buddhahood. Nichiren held that chanting the title of the Lotus Sutra, Namu Myoho Renge Kyo was the only way to practice Buddhism in the degenerate age of Dharma decline and was the highest practice of Buddhism. Nichiren described chapters 10-22 as the third realm of the Lotus Sutra which emphasizes the need to endure the trials of life and bodhisattva practice of the true law in the real Saha world. Dogen, the 13th century Japanese founder of Soto Zen Buddhism, used the Lotus Sutra often in his writings. According to Taigen Dan Layton, while Dogen's writings employ many sources, probably along with his own intuitive meditative awareness, his direct citations of the Lotus Sutra indicate his conscious appropriation of its teachings as a significant source, and that his writing demonstrates that Dogen himself saw the Lotus Sutra, expounded by all Buddhas in the Three Times, as an important source for this self proclamatory rhetorical style of expounding. In his Shobhagenzo, Dogen directly discusses the Lotus Sutra in the essay Hak Ten Hak. The Dharma Flower Turns the Dharma Flower. The essay uses a dialogue from the Platform Sutra between Huning and a monk who has memorized the Lotus Sutra to illustrate the non dual nature of Dharma practice and sutra study. The Soto Zen monk Ryokan also studied the Lotus Sutra extensively, and this sutra was the biggest inspiration for his poetry and calligraphy. During his final days, Dogen spent his time reciting and writing the Lotus Sutra in his room which he named, the Lotus Sutra Hermitage. The Rinzai Zen master Hakuin Ekaku achieved enlightenment while reading the third chapter of the Lotus Sutra. 
Topic: <laughs> Influence on East Asian culture. The Lotus Sutra has had a great impact on literature, art, and folklore for over 1,400 years. Topic: <laughs> Art. Various events from it are depicted in religious art. Wang argues that the explosion of art inspired by the Lotus Sutra, starting from the 7th and 8th centuries in China, was a confluence of text and the topography of the Chinese medieval mind in which the latter dominated. Motifs from the Lotus Sutra figure prominently in the Dunhuang Caves built in the Sui era. The theme of Shakyamuni and Prabhudaratna Buddhas seated together as depicted in the 11th chapter of the Lotus Sutra can be seen in a bronze plaque year 686 at Hayes Dera Temple in Japan and, in Korea, at Dabotap and Sukgaitap Pagodas, built in 751, at Bulguksa Temple. <laughs> <laughs> Literature Tamura refers to the Lotus Sutra literary genre. Its ideas and images are writ large in great works of Chinese and Japanese literature such as The Dream of the Red Chamber and The Tale of Genji. The Lotus Sutra has had an outsized influence on Japanese Buddhist poetry. Far more poems have been Lotus Sutra inspired than other sutras. In the work Kanwa Taisho Myoho Renge Kyo, a compendium of more than 120 collections of poetry from the Heian period, there are more than 1360 poems with references to the Lotus Sutra in just their titles. Topic. Folklore The Lotus Sutra has inspired a branch of folklore based on figures in the sutra or subsequent people who have embraced it. The story of the Dragon King's daughter, who attained enlightenment in the twelfth chapter of the Lotus Sutra, appears in the complete tale of Avalokiteshvara and the Southern Seas and the precious scroll of Sudana and Longnu folkstories. The Miraculous Tales of the Lotus Sutra is a collection of 129 stories with folklore motifs based on Buddhist pseudo-biographies. <laughs> Modernist scholarship and internationalization Eugene Bernus's 1844, "'Introduction à l'histoire du Bouddhisme Indien' marks the start of modern academic scholarship of Buddhism in the West. His translation of the Lotus Sutra, La Lotus de la Bon Loi, was published posthumously in 1852. Prior to publication, a chapter from the translation was included in the 1844 journal The Dial, a publication of the New England Transcendentalists, translated from French to English by Elizabeth Palmer Peabody. A translation of the Lotus Sutra from Sanskrit was completed by Kern in 1884. Western interest in the Lotus Sutra waned in the latter 19th century as Indocentric scholars focused on older Pali and Sanskrit texts. However, Christian missionaries in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, based predominantly in China, became interested in Kumarahiva's translation of the Lotus Sutra into Chinese. These scholars attempted to draw parallels between the Old and New Testaments to earlier Nikaya Sutras and the Lotus Sutra. Abbreviated and Christocentric. Translations were published by Richard and Soothill, according to Shields. Modern East interpretations of the Lotus Sutra begin with the early 20th century nationalist applications of the Lotus Sutra by Chigaku Tanaka, Nisho Honda, Senoo, and Nisho Inoue. In the post World War II years, scholarly attention to the Lotus Sutra was inspired by renewed interest in Japanese Buddhism as well as archaeological research in Dunhuang. This led to the 1976 Leon Hurwitz publication of the Lotus Sutra based on Kumarahiva's translation. Whereas the Hurwitz work was independent scholarship, other modern translations were sponsored by Buddhist groups, Kato Bunno 1975, Nichiren Shu, Risho Kosei Kai, Murano Senchu 1974, Nichiren Shu, Burton Watson 1993, Soka Gakkai, and the Buddhist Text Translation Society Zanwa. Japanese new religions began forming in the 19th century and the trend accelerated after World War II. Some of these groups have pushed the study of the Lotus Sutra to a global scale. While noting the importance of several Japanese new religious movements to Lotus Sutra scholarship, Lopez focuses on the contributions made by the Ryukai and Soka Gakkai and Stone discusses the contributions of the Soka Gakkai and Risho Kosei Kai. 
Itai Yamada, the 253rd head priest of the Tendai denomination conducted ecumenical dialogues with religious leaders around the world based on his interpretation of the Lotus Sutra which culminated in a 1987 summit. He also used the Lotus Sutra to move his sect from a ''Temple Buddhism'' perspective to one based on social engagement. Nichiren-inspired Buddhist organizations have shared their interpretations of the Lotus Sutra through publications, academic symposia, and exhibitions. See also Amitabha Sutra Flower Sermon Heart Sutra Hak Gisho, an annotated Japanese version of the sutra. Mahayana Sutras Topic. Notes Topic. References Topic. Sources Topic. Further reading Topic. External links An 1884 English translation from Sanskrit by H. Kern from the Sacred Texts website An English translation by the Buddhist Text Translation Society